Hi everyone, welcome back to Operations Research. So today we will give our second lecture about the simplex method. Last time we introduced the basic ideas of the simplex method. So you know given us um, any linear programs, how to get the standard form uh, linear program and how to use the simplex method to solve it. We basically run several iterations to get to the optimal solution. But there are still some problems that we need to solve or we need so that we may complete the idea about the simplex method. The first one and probably the most important one is about how may we find an initial basic feasible solution. Okay? Last time all the problems we solved contain only less than or equal to constraints because we know how to find a trivial basic feasible solution for that for us to start the linear uh, the simplex method. We need to do that for a general linear program so that we may really uh, use the simplex method to solve any problems. And with that, we also need to know whether a linear program is infeasible. Okay, so we need a method to do that. Also, we need to make sure that if a linear program is unbounded, then simplex method will really tell us about that. Okay, we're, we're going to see how to do that. Also, regarding choosing variables to enter and leave, we need to... Uh, <coughs> last time we, uh, we had some questions. For example, if there are multiple candidates to enter the, uh, the, 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 the basis, okay, we need to know which one to enter. And also, if there are multiple candidates to leave the basis, then we also need to know which one to leave. Okay, that's some issue. And then finally, we want to complete our discussion by discussing how efficient the simplex method is. Okay, we want to use some time to briefly discuss the efficiency issue and uh, to let you know uh, the complexity of linear programs and uh, some related uh, stuff. So, uh, I expect you to read sections 4.5 and 4.6 carefully. Okay, they certainly build on the knowledge from 4.1 to 4.4. So, the first six sections need to be studied carefully. Okay, uh, so that you may really learn something. And for the efficiency issue, most of the related information are contained in section 4.8 and section 4.9. So I encourage you to um, read these sections so that you may learn more, okay? learn something outside the slides. So let's start. In this video, I want to tell you how to utilize those information on tableaus so that you may know a linear program is unbounded or having multiple optimal solutions. Okay? That's the topic of this, this video. When is an LP unbounded? An LP is unbounded if the following two things happen together. There is an improving direction for you to move and improve your objective value. And also a long leg direction. There should be no constraint in front of you. You may move forever so that the problem is unbounded. We need to find such a direction so that we can say an LP is unbounded. So, we want to know, when we are running the simplex method, how may we know it in a simplex tableau? We're going to illustrate this idea with this example. Two inequality constraints, a maximization problem, two variables. We first get the standard form before we can run the simplex method. We get two artificial, uh, sorry, two slick variables. Now there are four variables. And then we start to run the simplex method. Initially, there is a negative reduced cost. For this maximization problem, we want this variable to enter. Okay, so this variable enters and the ratio test okay, tells us that this is ratio is 1, this ratio is 2. So 1 is the smaller one. We do a pivoting to get the second tableau. From the second tableau, we can see there is another negative reduced cost. So this x2 should enter, and here this negative number does not compete in the ratio test, so the second ratio 
is the smallest because it is the only ratio. Do one more iteration, we get something like this. Okay, at this moment, if you want to run this one more iteration, you should enter x3, right? But at this case, you see that there is nothing we may do for the ratio test. Because for a row to compete in the ratio test, the denominator must be positive. But here, all the numbers are negative. Then, what's happening? Okay, that's the thing to discuss. So, no one participated in the ratio test. And that's why we here, we do not know which variable should leave the basis. And essentially, the answer is, no one should leave. Whenever we see this, we have, we have identified unboundedness. If we increase x3 by entering x3, okay, we can see that x1 and x2 will both become larger. x1 and x2, they are currently the basic variables. Okay? They are 3 and 2. They are currently basic. And when we increase a non-basic variable, if all the basic variables become larger, larger, and larger, that means no one is going to become zero, and that means you can do that forever. So here, for row 1, if you increase x3, okay, then x1 will become larger. If you increase x3 again, then in row 2, x2 will become larger. Okay? These two equations come from these two tableaus. So, because we need to satisfy these two equalities and x1, x2 becomes larger, larger, and larger, we know this direction for improving the objective function or this direction for entering x3 is an unbounded improving direction. Okay? This is improving and also there is no constraint in front of you. Both uh, all the non all the basic variables becomes larger and no one can become zero. So this is unbounded. Graphically let's see this. Initially we are here, okay, zero zero. In one iteration, in two iteration we get to here. And then when we want to enter X3, we will move along this particular edge. Okay, we will try to move in this way. Because, uh, why do we know that? We want to enter x3, okay, x3 variable. x3 is the uh, slick variable of the first constraint, okay, this one. So we want to move uh, away from this constraint, and that's why we move along this direction. And when we do that, we can see that both non-binding constraints are behind us. These two non-binding constraints means uh, this one, Okay, and that one. When we move along the direction here, okay, it will be impossible for us to touch these two non-binding constraints because we are moving in a direction that can never touch these two constraints, right? So graphically, we can see why this is an improving and unbounded direction, and that's why the problem is unbounded. So. As a conclusion, suppose I have a minimization problem. Then, if I can see any column in any tableau like this, satisfying that the reduced cost, this number here, is positive, and in the entering column, all those numbers are non-positive, then we may stop and conclude that this linear program is unbounded. When we see a positive reduced cost, okay, this number. This is saying that we have an improving direction, okay, because the reduced cost is positive. If we enter this variable, this is going to benefit our solution. But if all the numbers in the entering column are non-positive, that means when you increase when you increase that entering variable, no basic variable is going to decrease, and the problem is unbounded. I mean, the direction is unbounded. Okay, so we have this general uh, rule for detecting unbounded linear programs for a minimization problem. 
with the same logic, you will be able to find the rule for maximization problems by yourself, and I will leave the task for you to do a practice. Okay, but the idea, the principle is is the same. Another related issue, uh, uh, I shouldn't say related. Another thing we may do, according to the informations on Tableau, is to detect multiple optimal solutions. In general, when we want to solve a linear program, we only want to report one solution, one optimal solution. So this is something that we really uh, we do not really need to do. But it is interesting for us to ask. When we stop at a one optimal solution, are there any other optimal solutions? Okay, just one curiosity question. So, suppose we have another example. Let's do that in standard form directly. So we have three RTV, uh, three slake variables here. Okay, if we use the simplex method to solve this question, then we have the initial tableau. This is one possibility for entering variables. So suppose we enter x1, and then we do ratio test. This one, the second row has a ratio 6, which is the smallest. So we do one pivoting on 2, and then get to the second tableau. Uh, here, this is a typo. This should be negative. Okay, negative 1 half. So <coughs> you see, you observe the negative reduced cost here. So you enter x2, and now according to the ratio test, x5 should leave. So you do one iteration again, and you get here. At, the, at this moment, you see that for all the reduced cost, nothing is negative. So we may stop and report an optimal solution here. It is 5, 2, 3, 0, 0. Okay? So in practice, we only want one optimal solution. So we will stop and report that optimal solution. But one additional information we observe is this one. Okay. In the optimal tableau, we see that there are multiple optimal solutions because we have this zero reduced cost. Okay, zero reduced cost. So that means if we enter if, I mean if, we will not do that because this is optimal, but if if we enter x4, then the z value will not be affected, right? Okay, so this happens in general, but if that happens at an optimal solution, then it's a special situation. The current solution is optimal, and there is a direction such that if we move along that direction, the objective value will not be modified or changed. Then the current solution is optimal. There are other solutions that is the same as the current one. So all points along that direction is optimal. Okay? So if you are at an optimal tableau and you see one zero reduced cost for a non-basic variable, then the, there are multiple optimal solutions. Graphically, we may see that uh, what we did for the two simplex iteration will move us from the origin points to this solution, 5, 2. At this optimal solution, if we enter x4, we will move along this direction, and then all points there will be optimal, okay? according to the simplex tableau, according to the figure here. So, in general, if we have an optimal tableau with a non-basic variable having zero reduced cost, the linear program has multiple optimal solutions. One thing that I need to address here is that this, the statement is true only for non-degenerate linear programs. Okay? If we have a degenerate linear program, okay, which will appear very soon in, in about one hour, okay, we will discuss this degeneracy and non-degeneracy in today's lecture. So um, if you need some review, we'll do that later. But keep in mind that this statement is true only for non-degenerate linear programs. If we have degenerate linear programs, then the condition is not sufficient. 
And also another thing to 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 remind you is that, in practice, we only need to know one optimal solution, and we will stop whenever we have one optimal solution. So in in practice, typically no no one really can no one really care about the existence of multiple optimal solutions. Your boss or your manager may ask you to find to execute one optimal plan, right? But your boss typically do not ask you to find all the optimal plans. That's not useful, and that cannot improve your profit. And that's typically in many situations too hard to do. Okay, so with the information on the simplex tableau, we may detect unboundedness. We may detect multiple optimal solutions. In the next video, we will teach you how to detect infeasibility or feasibility. Thank you.